Orange is back. Welcome to Orange Stories. Today we're gonna have the last part and finally the last part from the smart scrum industry. Okay. Now we should finish this long story that took a long time and a hard effort on it. Okay. Anyway, let's get started. I had stopped in the last part when uh, I had get worked with the, the assistant prosecutor of the state. Okay, as I told you that I am a clever man or a clever boy and smart and also don't forget I did all of that and my age was still like 19 years old. Okay, anyway, so let's continue. I worked with him for a while and uh, on a day by coincidence there were like a lawyer had joined us. The lawyer was like, as I, say, I told you, by coincidence he was from Harvard too, that suppose that I'm from Harvard, okay, he was like glad and happy to meet someone from Harvard too, so he was keep on asking deep questions on the university for me, like do you, do you know this, do you know that, do you know that teacher, do you know that sir, do you know that professor, do you know what happened, and like that stuff questions, and he was like almost to like to undercover me so in that moment I had decided that I would be in danger as always if I'm in danger I will escape from it of course I don't want to be in trouble so I had left the job and I had left the whole state and in that moment I had decided that to leave the uh, job and to leave the career itself so I ha and also I had left the state as I told you and I had moved to Utah State specifically on Brigham Young University and I had worked there as like uh, an, a professor assistant I had tricked the university or the yes I tricked the university to like uh, to let me work for uh, with them as a professor assistant for eight months but the university until today they are denying that I had worked with them as they, they want of course they don't want to be like they had been fooled or tricked by a young boy Anyway, and for all that long years that had been, I was like being wanted from the FBI, and like, and they are chasing me from place to place. But there was like, as I told you, they were being hard to track me as I'm moving from place to place, and I'm changing the names, changing the jobs, all that stuff. Even the Interpol, that the the international police, they were also chasing me, or they were after me. So as I told you, I had left, the, um, I had worked with the Brigham Young University for like 8 months and I had uh, been moved from it to Europe directly, I had left the whole country and I had moved to Europe and there I had been like moving from a country to a country in, inside Europe and I had been tricking people and doing my things but uh, there is nothing specifically or something like uh, wow to say it or uh, story about it it was like normal scams and like I'm tricking people with taking the tricks were taking from me like day two days like that but it was not something like eight months 11 months as a doctor and like two years as a pilot that's why I uh, no need to go in a deep details and unfortunately I got being caught by the Interpol in France from a note that had been um, out while I'm a pilot uh, from Sweden and as I told you it was like when I was a pilot that note was out as the Interpol got caught me in uh, France so I stayed there in jail for like a couple of months then I had moved from France to Sweden as the note came from it and also I stayed there for a couple of months until finally they had like uh, took me to America and the American court had decided that I had or said that I have to stay in jail for like 12 can say it for 12 years do you can imagine 12 years for a young boy but as I'm a clever and I'm having a hope and I like I love the life so I didn't give up and I had tried to escape from the prison for like two times 
Yes, I got caught, but I tried. I never stopped. And after a complete four years, the FBI had visited me with like surprise visit or unexpected visit, and they offered me an offer. The offer was like uh, they will free me if I help them or I, if I work with them to like to undercover all the scam peoples who are like scamming I don't know what's the correct word so just forgive me okay anyway uh, to help them to know what the criminal or the scammer, scammer thinking about especially on the shakes points as you know that I was like uh, scamming the shakes and all that stuff so they was like the specialized of the checks that uh, the person who said that if that check is correct or no he was like amazed that it was like very difficult and take and taking a lot of time to know that if uh, to know that my checks was unreal or like it was a scam or was by me or by someone who did it's not like an official check so on that purpose the offer was and all of that because I was like making a professional checks that you cannot even know it if it was real or no so that's why the FBI had decided that I'm a talented person and I can help them so they had this so they offered me this offer if I want to change my life to the to do the right thing or no and if you remember I start this when I was like poor, I was like having nothing. I was needing the money. I, I needed a life without any help. That had come for me. So I was not like a criminal from the beginning. Or I don't. Ha I was not having that, um, the evil thinking or all that stuff. I was a normal person who decided to live only. And as you know, the human instinct will do anything to keep you alive. That had come for me to stay alive. That's it. Okay, I had like been to uh, had make it over from uh, doctor to a uh, lawyer. But anyway, I was like enjoying, and I was also still I was like a young person, a young boy, a young man. That and I have no one to say to me that the wrong, the right, and all that stuff. So of course I had accept the offer as I want to leave the prison. I don't want to spend all my life or all my young years on the prison. So I had been working with them until today. We are in 2019 and I've been working with them until today. Even my like um, my years with them or the contract that I had signed with them had been finished that I should I must work with them. But I had decided to continue with them. Why not? I'm doing a good thing to the people, to the community. So what's the problem with? Today, my age is 71 years, and my name well, is Frank Abignail. That was our story. We completed finally. And as I told you, you will know the name of the film or, that had been uh, created from that story of, or from that man. And the movie was Catch Me If You Can, that had been um, released on 2002 and the staring of the Oscar winner Leonardo DiCaprio okay the movie was like uh, was copying my uh, copying his life or my life as I get used on that character uh, the movie uh, added or the they were at some details and that not necessary and even not happened to him so you can just watch it but take it as the whole point not uh, on the details that if he was like drinking a coffee or thinking for something even me I had added a little stuff that I don't know that if it really happens or no that, that was all from my work so that was our story see you in the next story even if you want any story that happens to you or you have a story that you want me to say it in public just leave it in the comments. See you in the next time. Or it was with you. Goodbye. Okay, finally we had finished the story. Uh, I had remembered something. And that um, there was a speech. 
that Frank was uh, given on Google. Um, you can you will find it in the down description. Just go and watch it. You can see how that man is clever. How from his speech or his talking, you can know that how he convinced all that people from on his uh, past on the past to do what he want or uh, to make them that believe what he want them to believe. So yeah.